Good morning. My name is Reverend Jim McLean, and let me tell you how glad I am to be in worship with you this morning. I don't know about you, but it's been six months, and I never imagined it would be this long. And I feel like sometimes I'm like the people of Israel out in the desert. I forget that God provides manna. I forget that God provides water. I forget that God provides quail, that God provides us in our time of need, and I find myself much more like the Israelites, wanting something more, something different. A uh, golden calf, hey, something that's familiar. And I forget to say thank you. I am so glad to be able to be in worship with each and every one of you this morning. And if you're watching live, perfect. If you're watching recorded, I'm glad that we're able to meet you where you are, how you are, where, when you are, whoever you are. Now, the numbers here in San Antonio started leveling off and going down. I hope that they're leveling off in your area. Uh, I grew up in Lubbock, Texas. They can't say that right now. My wife grew up in Amarillo. They can't say that right now. The numbers in Texas are starting back up, and unfortunately, so are the numbers here in San Antonio. So please, stay safe. Make smart decisions. As the numbers stay down low, we want to start looking at ways that people feel comfortable being back in in-person worship. Now, that doesn't mean it's any safer, but if the numbers are low enough, then that means it's less likely. We're just playing odds. I have children that live in Nevada. They lived in Las Vegas for a little while. I have a new relationship with playing the odds. We're playing the odds that there'll be fewer people for you to come in contact with at HEB, at the grocery store, at the filling station, wherever you are, and therefore, it's less likely that you will come in contact with someone that's COVID positive here in the sanctuary. So we're working on those protocols to keep everybody as safe as possible. But if the numbers go back up, then the odds are in the house's favor. And we don't want the odds in COVID's favor. So please, stay healthy, stay well, keep those numbers down. And I know, I have grandchildren. And, and one of the biggest discussions in our Facebook conversations right now are, what about trick-or-treating? How can we possibly get through October 31st without trick-or-treating? Let me just assure you, I don't have an answer, all right? I know there's stuff. I know there's all sorts of things that we're dealing with, all sorts of trials and tribulations, all sorts of challenges. So please, make good decisions, wear your mask, keep social distancing. We know those things work. We want everyone back in the sanctuary, but we want everyone back in the sanctuary. We've had several cases of COVID within our congregation. To the best of my understanding, no one in our congregation, in our community of faith, in our extended community of faith, online as well, has died as a result of having COVID or while having COVID. Thanks be to God. We don't want anyone else to die from COVID. We don't. So please keep our first responders, all of those that are working the front line. Again, it was popular for a while to go out and, and do parking lot things. We've gotten used to it. Keep them in prayer. Celebrate them. Write them thank you notes. Let us not forget. We continue to find new ways to incorporate in-person worship with online worship. There's a lot of things. We want to invite you to come by our pumpkin patch. It's outside. There's lots of space. It was COVID CDC guidelines before there was COVID CDC guidelines. And so please come, take pictures, meet some of the members of our church. If you want to volunteer to help work the pumpkin patch, you can go online and let us know. If you want to come by and just take some pictures, post them. Use our hashtag. Let us know that you're out there. Also, our newsletter is here. You can also pick that up online by going to our webpage, but you can swing by our gathering place, and it's on the table out there. If you like to have something you can hold and read and underline, Pick it up, print it off, whatever it is. Please, we want you to be involved. Last week, we handed out boats with children's names on them, inviting people to pray for those. We have a few left out in the gathering place. They're on the uh, table, altar, out there in the gathering place. If you want to swing by, if you live in this neighborhood, swing by and pick one up. If you want one online, let me know. Tag me. Send me an email. I'll shoot a picture of one. I'll set it aside for you. I'll mail it to you. I mailed out a couple last week. I want you to be involved. Also, if you want to have your child's name added, put it in the comment section. You can also text the word BOATS, B-O-A-T-S, capital B-O-A-T-S. Get out your cell phones, your iPhones, your smartphones. Get out your pencil and paper. Write down, I've got two numbers to give you today. 
The first number for boats is 210-817-7007. We'll be using that number a lot, so you want it in your contacts as part of the community of faith. Put that in your contacts and then text a note to that person. That's me. I'm the, on the other end of that. Text the word boats. It'll start a process. It'll ask you some questions. It'll ask you your email address. We want to stay connected with you. Then I can, like I said, I can send you a picture of the boat. I can mail you a copy of the boat if you give me your physical address. It's not just in person. It is in spirit. And so giving, if giving of yourself, your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness is part of your relationship with the covenant community. You can come by. You can do it in person. You can do it online. There's another way. I told you, get out your pencil and paper. I got two numbers. If you want to text to give, it's 210-960-8251. 210-817-8251. Again, put that in your contacts. You can put it in the same one. Text to give. Just text the amount that you want to give. You can also go online. There's an app for that. But of course, if it's meaningful to you to give in person, stop by. We're here from about 7 o'clock. Actually, Tim gets here much earlier than I do. We're here from about 7 o'clock till noon on Sundays. Come in the gathering place, walk in, drop your offering plate, drop your offering in the offering plate, do it in person, greet a few folks, go home. Or stay. Be safe. Make good decisions, whether it's virtual or in person. Now, I do have a couple of other things you can do to get involved. We are looking for iPhone 6s or later. They don't have to be working. They simply have to have Wi-Fi access and a good camera. We're using people's personal equipment here to broadcast this service. And so if you've got an old iPhone 6 or later and you can spare it, if it will connect to Wi-Fi and has a good camera, we can use it and then I can get my phone back and Tim can get his iPad back and we can go back to doing what we do. So please, if you've got one and want to send it to the church, tag us, let us know, send me a text, send me an email. Veterans Day photos. Not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that is Veterans Day weekend. Again, we want everyone to feel involved. Put them online. Put them on our Facebook page. Go to our Facebook page. Like our Facebook page. Join one of our groups. We will create a collage. We can include more people and reach more people that way than we can ever in person. So please, send us photos of your veterans. We want to include them. Join our groups. Check out our page. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday. It's also All Saints Sunday. Again, we want everyone to be able to participate, all right? So we will be naming those who have entered into a covenant relationship with our congregation and have died in the past year. We will be lighting a candle for them as part of worship. You can participate virtually. We will invite their families to be here physically if they choose to be here physically. Again, that's a personal decision. They can also join us virtually. And we will ring a bell as their names are read. But we also want to recognize that you have folks in your life that aren't part of this worshiping community. You can be part of our worship community. It's open to anyone and everyone. But there's sometimes there's different things that keep us from being part of a covenant community. We want to honor those people as well. Put your prayer concerns, put your names, put your joys, anything that you want to communicate with the church, put it in the comment section as we go through worship. That way, as people see it throughout the week, we have more people watch this service throughout the week than we do live on Sunday morning. That's great. That's great. It's hard to do that when you only have in-person worship. Put the comments in there. Put your prayers. Put your joys. Put your concerns. So again, God is with us. God is present. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Sometimes I get impatient. Halloween's not going to be the same as it was last year. I love quail. But like the Israelites, sometimes I get tired of quail. I love fresh bread, but I'm not real sure I want a bunch of manna. Fresh spring water, they grumbled about that too. No matter what we have, there's a tendency to take it for granted. What a blessing that we can join together in such a greater cloud of witnesses. Thanks be.
to God. Debbie, if you'd lead us into this holy space, in this holy time, with your offering of music. <laughs> Good morning. Please stand and join me in our call to worship. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let your work be manifest to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper us for the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands.
We acknowledge that we have many distractions, that the world is constantly pulling at us, demanding our attention. We have things we would like to lay at Christ's feet, but we have a difficult time letting go of us. So I invite you to join with me in our prayer of confession, followed by an assurance and pardon, as we invite God to take these things and cleanse us for this holy service. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may these words of assurance be written upon your hearts to draw strength from always. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. And the people said, Amen. So we are gathered here together. I invite you to turn to those that are near you. If you are alone, then trust the Holy Spirit to bind you together with those that you love. In the name of Jesus Christ, thanks be to God. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we give you thanks for all that you've given us. We give you thanks for strength and help in time of need. We give you thanks for your assurance in times of isolation and solitude. We lift up our prayers. You know each and every one of our prayers. We post them in our comments. We write them on our notes. We ask for your prayers for Cindy, a longtime friend. May she have a successful surgery. You know our needs, each and every one. So be with our country as we continue to move forward. Help us to participate prayerfully, kindly, with generosity. We pray for all who are sick, especially those that are battling covid and COVID-related illnesses. But we also pray for those who need surgeries that are having to be postponed because of the demands upon our hospital setting. Heal them, Lord. But heal them like you healed Jacob. Where we know your presence, we understand your power, we wrestle with understanding, but after the encounter, we might still have a limp. We pray for your church and we pray for this congregation as we seek our way through this desert time, this time of change, this time of adjustment, this time of newness. May we see the newness of creation and not destruction. May we see the newness of a new life and not just death. We pray for those who have died, those we name in our hearts, those that we name by name and comment and on our lips, who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors, and who join us now as we pray with Christ the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
It is our tradition to share in the Apostles' Creed while standing, so I invite you to do so as we anchor our faith in this historic profession of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> standing, I invite you, please be seated. Kristen, if you will lead us in our prayer. Please join me in prayer. Lord, you have entrusted us with the awe-inspiring task of sharing the message of the gospel. We acknowledge that we cannot simply give money and expect your message to be spread. We must consistently give ourselves by offering our time, talents, gifts, service, and witness. Stir within us the courage to be Christian stewards throughout our daily living. Accept these gifts as a symbol of our love and commitment to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
please join me in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, Early Bird Choir and, and the entire worship team that helps to make this worship possible. So have you ever wondered why we stand for the gospel reading? It comes from that phrase that the word was God and the word was with God. And we believe that when the holy word is read, God is present. And therefore we stand. So wherever you are, I want you to know that God is present in that space, in that time. Whether it's a closet, whether it's a great room in a house, whether it's a small apartment or a hospital bed, you are in holy faith. So we continue to work our way through the Gospel of Matthew, reading now from the 22nd chapter, beginning with the 34th, 34th verse. They're still challenging Jesus, trying to trap him. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbors as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? Well, they said to him, the son of David. And he said to them, how then is it that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. You're going to need a couple of things, so I'm going to give you a minute. You're going to need a piece of paper. doesn't matter where it comes from, well, don't, don't, you're going to cut it, so make sure mom's okay with it, but you're going to need a piece of paper, you're going to need some scissors, and something to write with, and if you don't have it right now, that's okay, because remember, this stays up, and you can do it at any point, but I'm giving you a second, so that you can go get some paper and some scissors, and we're going to talk about the gospel. Yeah, Pastor Jim's afraid you're going to run with scissors, only grown-ups do those kind of things, kids know better. So, this morning, the gospel lesson is really all that matters. Like, all that matters. Not just in the Bible, but like, all that matters. And my favorite thing is that at the end of the gospel lesson, it says, and then nobody asks any more questions. You know why? Because sometimes you get the answer, and then you don't. You don't have to ask any more questions. And that's kind of what happened today. So I hope that you have your piece of paper, whatever it is. It can be big or small. This is my size. This is going to be kind of challenging because i got to hold this microphone so it stays online and do it. But I want you to fold your piece of paper in half. It doesn't matter, hot dog or hamburger. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be straight. So there it is. It's folded in half. Maybe you've done this before. It's kind of magical, actually, what happens. So now you have two sides to the paper, right? Just like in Godly Play, we say we have two sides to the 10 best ways to live. And in today, we have two sides to what is most important. So here's the two sides. Now I want you to take your scissors. I'm going to put the mic down because I want to be able to show you. So take your scissors and on the folded part, that's this part right here, that's where we're going to start cutting where it's folded. Okay. 
Now you have half a heart. Now, God doesn't want us to have half a heart. That would be dumb. God wants us to have a whole heart. And today's gospel lesson tells us that a whole heart loves God and loves people. Only having half won't work. That by loving God, then we get called to love people. Now, you'll notice on Miss Cursita's paper, it doesn't say nice people. It doesn't say people we like. It doesn't say people who are like us. It doesn't say people we agree with. It's capital P. You know what that means. That means all of them. All of them. Love God, love people. Now, if you've been hanging out with us in Godly Play, this isn't news to you. There's some grown-ups watching that this is news. But we know it's the way the Ten Commandments are set up. And only having half a heart, it doesn't work. But when we open it, then we get the whole heart and we live the way God intended us. No more questions. Will you pray with me? With our hands together and our head bowed and our eyes closed. Dear God, thanks for helping me do hard things. Like loving with my whole heart. And loving all people. Help me when I fail to try again. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. So if you've been following along in the lectionary, you realize we have uh, skipped a small part of Matthew. It's the section when they try again to trap Jesus. Uh, this time, the uh, Sadducees are doing it, and they come and ask him about the resurrection, and they use the, the story. You may remember the story a little bit better. Uh, if a man uh, dies and his wife is then taken care of by his brother and they marry and that man dies and on and on and on whose wife is she and again they're trying to trap Jesus so last week we had the Pharisees and the Herodians trying to get Jesus to say something that would get him in trouble and then we skip this part where the Sadducees come in and guess what they're doing they're trying to dig up some dirt on Jesus. They're trying to get Jesus to say something that will make him less popular and swing popularity in their direction. And then today the Pharisees are back at it again, wanting to dig up dirt to swing the popular opinion to turn the people against Jesus. Sounds like television lately, doesn't it? everybody's trying to get dirt on somebody else. Wouldn't it be great if we could just talk about the positive stuff? And then Jesus turns and asks them a question. It could be that he gave them the final answer. But it could be that when we turn and look at ourselves as opposed to looking at others, we realize our need for Jesus. We realize that we too make mistakes and are fallible. That we too need a community of faith. That we need to be loved. Not only do we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, our soul, and all our strength, but that God loves us with all God's heart, with all God's mind, with all God's soul, with all the power of God. And we are to love our neighbors, to love one another, and to be loved by one another. Many years ago, I love doing weddings. I'll just tell you, I know I'm weird. You folks that have known me for a long time will vouch I'm weird. I'm very weird, all right? I love weddings, and I love funerals. 
a lot of my folks that I talk to, a lot of my fe- fellow pastors, they, you know, they, they like weddings okay. It's just they don't like the stuff that often comes with weddings. Sometimes people involved in weddings get really anxious. Um, that doesn't bother me. Uh, I love funerals. Uh, I love getting to know people. I love getting to know their story. I love being part of that time in their life. So this young couple comes in, and, and they say, uh, so we introduce ourselves, and one of the first things I do is, is, I don't know whether you've noticed this, but people love talking about themselves. And, and let me just say also, nobody knows your story better than you do. So when you're witnessing, when you're talking to somebody, if you're speaking from the first person, if you're talking about who you are, what you believe, what your values are, where you find your strength, nobody knows your story better than you do. So I always ask them, tell me about the wedding. That's their story. I want to know that. And we get into, so we finally got down to, are there any scripture passages that you want included? And the, the groom sets up and says, yeah, I want that one that says, wives, obey your husband. It's in Second Peter if you want to look it up, okay? Just in case you want, First Peter, First Peter, second chapter, okay? Now, that wasn't the surprising part. You should have seen the bride's look on her face when I said, okay, no problem here. I thought she was going to leave immediately, all right? Because you see, people tend to take that phrase out of context. Wives, obey your husband. People, obey the Lord God. Now, interestingly enough, the word obey never appears in the Old Testament. Out of all of those commandments... The word obey never appears in the Old Testament. That's a New Testament thing, and that's actually a Paul thing. But I want to back up just a little bit, okay? Because you see in that 1 Peter passage, if you read the whole thing, for me it says, wives, obey your husbands, and husbands, honor your wives as Christ has honored the church. Now just think a minute of what Christ has done, will do, and always does for the church. Remember in Matthew, we're moving towards the cross. We're going to get there in a couple of weeks. You may think the cross is only reserved for Easter, but no, we get to the cross twice a year. Jesus knows the heart of his disciples. He already knows that they're going to abandon him. They're going to betray him. They're going to desert him. They're going to let popular opinion and TV ads tell them who they are. If you don't know who you are, the world will tell you. If you don't know that you are a beloved child of God, the world will do everything in its power to convince you that you are not. Jesus knows this. And Jesus knows that they are going to turn on him, that they are going to hand him over to Pontius Pilate, that, they, that the people that he has come to save and to proclaim God's love and God's grace, that the very centuries underneath the cross will look up and say surely this man is the son of God and drive the nails into his hands and yet he never deserts them if you as a husband or a wife can grab your spouse's hand And with all honesty and all sincerity say, I believe in my heart of hearts with all I am, with all my might and all my mind and all my strength and all my soul, that you are about to make the biggest decision in all creation. You are about to make the biggest mistake of your life. Yet I will go with you. I will not desert you. 
I will not deny you. I will not turn my back on you. I will walk with you through this, and we will get through this together because I know what tomorrow brings. If you can do that, the obey part is not hard. The obey part is not hard. When we know that God loves us with all our heart, with all his might, with all his soul and all his strength, and will not ever abandon, then the obey part just isn't quite as hard, is it? The sacrifices don't seem quite as large. The inconvenience not quite as insurmountable. They chose a different text for their wedding. And that's okay. That's part of it. But still, when we know that we are loved, when we know that we do not walk together alone, then it's easy to obey. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs explores the Shema. That's what Jesus is quoting. Hear, O Israel. And he also, in his book, says there is no verb in biblical Hebrew that means obey. I saw some of you flipping through your concordances. I don't speak Hebrew. I'll have to take Rabbi Sachs' word for it. There is no verb in biblical Hebrew that means to obey, even with all the commandments. But the Shema means hear, listen, pay attention, stay focused, try to understand, internalize, Reflect on the meaning. What does it mean in our life to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself? Hear, O Israel. Hear, O people of God. Our faith is not a faith that binds us, that values blind, unthinking, unquestioning obedience. We hear, we ask questions, we wrestle, and we get it wrong. And God still loves us. And God still walks with us. And God meets us on the other side and carries us through. Do we always get it right? No. Do they always get it right? No. Do we always agree on everything? I hope not. Is it okay to wrestle? But we look inside ourselves. We look inside ourselves and say, what does it mean for me, Jim McLean, to say Jesus is Lord? I like the Savior part. I like the Savior part. But what does it mean? What if I don't get it right? God's still God. What if I misunderstand? God's a very patient God, a loving God. It's much easier to point a finger at somebody else, to challenge them. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, they want the people on their side. They're trying to trap Jesus. But Jesus speaks for himself. 
internally. Not trying to point out all of their flaws. And in fact, he just simply asked some questions, inviting them to examine their own faults, their own problems. And to believe that God can even love them. Loving someone's hard, isn't it? It's difficult. Now, there are some that are easier than others. And there are days that I'm easier to love than others. You can ask my wife. For the past six months, I haven't been the easiest person to love. She does it anyway. I don't know about you. Have you gotten angry? Have you gotten frustrated? Have you wanted to blame somebody? Point a finger at somebody? I have. But we're reminded today that when we recognize that God loves us, and therefore we can love one another. Love really is the most important thing. Madeline Engel wrote lots of books. A lot of people use her for devotional material. And over a long weekend, the article says that she was waiting for the biopsy results for her husband. And she kept praying, don't let it be cancer. Don't let it be cancer. Please, God, don't let it be cancer. And one of her friends said, you can't pray that. It either already is cancer or it isn't cancer. God's not going to suspend the universe just simply because you asked. And so she wrote about that. She said, I can't live with that understanding of prayer. She says, I think it's important for the heart to override intellect. And my heart says, I need to pray. And if we don't pray honestly according to the needs of the heart, then we repress our deepest feelings. If we don't believe that God can love us anyway, then we may not free ourselves up to be who God has created us to be. She says later after the diagnosis of cancer was pronounced and it was decided it was terminal, she doubted. She wondered if her prayers had been wasted. But then she understood, and rightly so, that prayer is about love. And love is never. that it wasn't the results of the prayer that sustained her. It was the prayer itself. That when we believe we can come to God honestly and quit trying to blame others and to believe that others are the cause of all our problems, and love one another. And love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and all our mind, and all our strength. And believe that God loves us in that same way. Then we can pray honestly and openly that our prayers are expressions of love. Maybe... Maybe there will be unexpected answers to those prayers. Maybe there'll be answers years down the road. Maybe those prayers will be answered and we won't even be aware of it because we'll be tired of quail or we'll be tired of manna or we'll be tired of spring water from a rock. But they're not lost. They're not wasted. 
God holds them. God, hands outstretched, receive them. Madeline Engel says, God receives them like precious pearls. So is this time hard? Yes. And I hope and pray that your greatest challenge this week is, how are we going to go trick-or-treating? And if it is, that's great. Living in community is hard. Staying in conversation is hard. Turning off the TV and looking for the positive in people rather than all the negativity out there. Believing that God can love even those people that vote differently than you do. Because there's going to be at least one out there. And chances are they're part of this faith community. So take a deep breath. Put away those immediate reactions. If you need to take a break from the news or social media or even your next door neighbor, take a break. Pray. Think about love. Is it hard? Yes. Is staying connection hard? Yes. Engaging in a thoughtful and loving conversation? It's hard. Is it worth it? Yes. Is it important? Well, Jesus says it's the most important. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you would like to be part of this covenant community, if you want to move from being an observer to being a participant, there's lots of ways. You can go online. Like I said, you can pull up our connection. We want selfies of you. We want selfies of you watching the worship service. We want devotionals from you because we want to know your story, and we believe that your story is important. We want pictures of you for Veterans Day, and not just you, but people that you love. We want you to be part. But we also want to invite you to claim that position and pledge to support this community of faith with your prayers, your presence, gifts, service, and witness. Just let us know. We'd love to have you as you are, where you are, whoever you are. And now let us respond to God's word, both spoken and heard, with the singing of hymn on 410. If you have a hymnal, I want a principle within. Let us sing.
now to the one who was raised from the dead, to the one who walked with the disciples all the way through life, death, and resurrection, and is able to present you faultless and without blemish before God's almighty throne, be all love, honor, majesty, power, and authority, now and forevermore. Go forth as the children of God. Go forth knowing that you are indeed loved by God. Amen. Amen.